if you've ever downloaded an image file and opened it in Notepad, what you'll see is a whole bunch of code. And I point this out because when you're trying to make your website faster, it's important to understand how making people download images affects performance. So when we download an image, we have to request it from the web server, along with however many other images we're trying to download at the same time, and wait for those to be downloaded, and then we've got to decode them. So when we take a look at a website like this one, where we've got quite a few images on the home page here, we've got this uh, big slider image up top, this banner, and then all the article images, and then we've got a bunch of tiny little images like this little link uh, icon next to the word blog, where all this little plus icon next to the word Facebook, etc. It adds up, right? So one of the things we can do to improve performance on a website is take these little uh, images and convert them into code right away. So in other words, instead of asking people to download them and then open them and then interpret the data, we're just going to turn it into data right away. We're going to use the system uh, called Base64 to do that. So uh, the first thing we're going to do to make that happen is we're going to open our website and we're going to use this tool called YSlow, which is available on both uh, for both Chrome and Firefox. Uh, we're going to use this tool YSlow to come up with a list of images that we can convert. So I just press the button here. I'm going to make this full screen. And you can run the test on your website and this is a good idea before you make these conversions because it'll, you'll see the difference that it makes when you take some of the images and convert them from tiny little uh, download files into pure data. So we're going to focus on the components area and then we're going to click on the CSS image uh, link. This is a list of every CSS image that we have and then over here on the left side uh, we have the size of the image. So 21 images is quite a bit but when you look at these images you see they're very very small with the exception of one image which is actually not that big, 15K. Really, we want to convert any image that's less than 32K. Any, uh, all these images are tiny. So to, to go ahead and start converting these images, what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this link. That's going to open the image in a, a new tab. And we're going to go ahead and save that image. And we can just save it to whatever we want. I'm going to save it right on the desktop. And then I'm going to open up uh, this website here that uh, I use to convert images to data. So this image, or this uh, website, you just upload the image you just downloaded. So this search.png file, which is on my desktop. Oops. And we're going to press a button, and then press another button. And then this thing is going to first show us the image then show us a, tra a traditional HTML image tag. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control, excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A. Actually, that's not going to work. I don't know why. So I'm just going to drag, copy that whole line of code there. And I'm going to paste it into a new uh, clean notepad file so you can see what it looks like. So we've traded a link here, a source, like normally when you saw an image tag and you saw src equals quote, you would see a file path. Well in this case we're going to see about two lines of data. Now this is an extremely small image that we converted. It's just a tiny little 11 by 12 pixel. But now when somebody visits our website, if they download this code, they don't have to download a file. This code's going to be in our CSS file, so it saves time, right? It saves a download request. And when you do this 15, 20, 25 times, it adds up to a significant time savings. It's a really nice little tactic. But we don't actually want, since we're going to concentrate on CSS images, we don't actually want this version of the code with the image tag. We want the code that is shown here. So I'm just going to copy all this code. And again, I'm going to paste it into a clean uh, notepad window. And then uh, we're just going to break it out. So we've got the width, the height, uh, the background repeat, and then the image URL. Now, this may be the way that your CSS is structured in your uh, website style sheet, and it might not be. But the part that we're going to focus on, the part that I would recommend you focus on, is the section Oops, that starts with URL and an open parenthesis and ends with a closed parenthesis. So this chunk of code right here, I'm going to delete everything that's not that. Because as much as I care about this other stuff, I really don't care. All I want to do is replace this URL and parentheses section uh, in our style sheet with this new data. So we're going to open our style sheet now. 
and we're going to find this image, which is search.png. So I'm just going to do a search. I hit Control F in Chrome, uh, and it shows up top right. If you do it in Firefox, it shows up bottom left. And we're just going to put URL, open parenthesis in there. Actually, we're going to put search.png in there. Okay, so here it is, right? Image, widgets, search.png. And there's the URL, open parenthesis portion. So let's just verify that that's the same file here. Image, widget, search.png. Okay, great. So I could just copy and paste uh, this code right in. The problem with that is when I look at this uh, file later, I'm not necessarily going to know what's what. So uh, what I'm going to do is break out this line of CSS. Um, and if you don't know a lot about CSS and you're watching this video, I'm sorry. It's kind of nice to have some CSS knowledge here. And all I'm doing is just breaking this out so that uh, I can comment the line that I'm about to replace. I can make a copy of it and comment it. Wow, there's a ton of stuff here, isn't there? Okay, great. So now every line that was running together is now on a separate line, I believe. Okay, good. So I'm going to copy this background line. I'm going to paste it here. So we have two versions of this line now. But I'm going to go ahead and put a comment, which is a forward slash and an asterisk, and then end comment, which is an asterisk and a forward slash, so that I have a backup version of this background CSS line. Now I'm going to go back to the original. I'm going to highlight the portion that shows URL, open parentheses, and then a path. And I'm going to replace that with this data. So again, the formats are the same, right? URL, open parentheses, then the data, and the close parentheses. So control A, control C, control V, and save. Now, this is just one image that I've done this for. We're actually going to go through and use this for every small image that's listed in Firebug. So if we look at Firebug again, uh, I just got rid of the first image here. There's still another 20 images to go. And I'm even going to say, let's go ahead and replace this 15 uh, kilobyte image. Sometimes uh, when you get around 30, technically when you hit 32K, you've gone too far. But I think even a little bit less than that, 25 or 30K, it's not necessarily a time savings. Because as you can imagine, this is just all the code that I needed to replace a tiny little image here. This this IV, whatever, this is all the data I needed to do that. Uh, when you get to a 30 kilobyte image, it's a significant uh, amount of data. And it kind of, A, it kind of messes up your style sheet. You know, when you when you scroll through your style sheet, you'll see big chunks of data in there. And second of all, um, it makes your style sheet really, really big. So one of the things that is downloaded when someone views your website is your style sheet. If we go back to this list of components, I shrink the images and hit CSS. See, I've already kind of increased, I've made a big style sheet already um, because I've consolidated all the style sheets from all the plugins that we run on this site into one style sheet or almost all the plugins to try and reduce the number of CSS file requests. Um, so I've already got a fairly sizable style sheet. When I start adding in all these images, I'm going to add uh, basically another 35K uh, to the style sheet. So, um, you know, like I said, if you've got some images that are 25 or 30 kilobytes, it might be too big. But uh, you can always test it, right? You can. That's why you comment that, commented that line out in the uh, style sheet. You can always say, you know what, I don't like this data thing that we just did and I want to undo it because I don't think it made our site faster. Uh, you just delete the line you created and restore the copy and you're good to go. So, But also keep this old commented version in here just because uh, in six months or a year when you're trying to figure out where that search.png image is uh, in your style sheet, you'll know. So anyway, that's how it's done. Good luck.